What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the How to Vegan podcast. My name is Kristen. So glad that you are tuning in today. Today's episode is going to be all about common mistakes that new vegans make and how to possibly avoid them or combat them entirely. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you. I think it's a great one for January, for the beginning of the year. A lot of people want to go vegan around this time of year. They try Veganuary, and I just thought this would be a perfect episode to kind of help those new vegans navigate some of the challenges that they may face. A huge thank you to today's sponsor, Osea Malibu. They are the original plant-based vegan cruelty-free, results-driven skincare line. I'm going to be chatting more about them in a little bit, so stay tuned for a little discount code that I have for you. If you haven't yet, don't forget to leave a review on Apple Podcasts for the How to Vegan podcast. It really, really helps more people see the podcast, and that's the goal. We want as many people to listen to this podcast as possible. So if you haven't left a review over there, please take the time to go do that. It really, really helps the podcast out a lot, and it doesn't take too much time on your end. So thank you so much for those of you who have left reviews and ratings. It means so much to me. I also wanted to just give you a little reminder that I do have a $5 healthy vegan starter kit on my website. It includes two weeks of meal plans, plus more than 20 healthy, delicious, and affordable vegan recipes, grocery lists to go with those meal plans, and more. So if you're interested, head on over to my website, kristenpound.com. Click on the little tab that says vegan starter kit and you will get it delivered to your inbox and be all set to go. And I also wanted to talk real briefly about the Institute for Integrative Nutrition because I get a lot of questions asking how I got to where I am today, how I got my health coaching certification and how all of this kind of unfolded. And I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, aka IIN. And it's just an amazing one year online program and you finish and you have your health coaching certification. They help you with everything. It's such an amazing program. I would highly recommend it to anybody interested in starting a career in health and wellness and kind of changing their lives and wanting to change the lives of others. It was amazing. I loved it so much. So, so, so much. Highly recommend. So if you're interested, I will leave a link in the show notes for a free curriculum guide so you can check that out and see if it's something you might be interested in. If you end up using me as your referrer, then you'll get a huge chunk of change off of your tuition, like we're talking in the thousands here. So if you're interested in checking out the school and you decide you want to join, definitely use me as your referrer. If you click the link and check out the free curriculum guide, then I'll automatically be signed up as your referrer. But if you actually talk to someone on the phone, make sure to tell them my maiden name along with my first name. So it's Kristen Kerr, K-E-R-R. That way you'll be all set up and you'll get all of your discounts and extra stuff that comes along with using me as a referrer. So just wanted to mention that because I've been getting a lot of emails and messages lately about some kind of health coaching certification and what I did. And people are just really interested in kind of jumpstarting their lives and creating a new career and path for themselves. So highly recommend IIN. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all, and I'm totally here for you because I went through it. I know what to expect. I know how it works, and I would love to answer any questions for you. So feel free to reach out if there's anything that I can answer for you. And if at any point during the episode you're really enjoying the episode, take a little screenshot, share it to your Instagram story, make sure to tag at how to vegan podcast and at kristen.pound. I will definitely reshare it. I love when you guys share the podcast with your people. It's just so awesome that you guys are enjoying the podcast enough to share it with share it with the people that follow you. So thank you so much to those of you who do that. I love it. I love seeing you guys spread the vegan message. Like I always say, the ripple effect is so real. All right, now let's get into today's topic, 10 mistakes new vegans make. So there are tons and tons and tons of benefits that come with a vegan diet and lifestyle, but in order to reap those benefits, you'll definitely want to know what to avoid when you're going vegan and what to do instead. So in today's episode, I'm going to talk about some common mistakes that people make when going vegan or trying to go vegan or thinking about going vegan. That's not to say that every single new vegan makes these mistakes, but a lot of people do. And that's why I thought it was really important to put together an episode like this. 
because I know that there's certain things that people do that are really common and that pop up a lot. And I thought, why not, why not talk about these and talk about some ways to kind of avoid combat them, get around them, kind of make things a little bit easier for you. So I really hope that you enjoy this episode and everything that I've put together for you. A few little disclaimers before we begin. So this episode, along with all of my episodes, are just here to inspire you, give you information. I just want you to know that I'm not trying to tell you that you need to be vegan or telling you that this is what you should be doing. Your choices should be made by you and by you only. This is your life. So although I completely think that veganism is amazing and that everyone would benefit from living this way, I do think that you need to make your own decisions. And I just wanted to make that clear because I don't know if I've said that in the last few episodes that this podcast isn't here to make you feel shamed if you're not vegan or bad in any sort of way if you're not making choices that are similar to mine or similar to people around you. This is something that you need to do for you. And I do think that kind of saying that every here and now in my podcast is just a good idea. Like this is not here to force you to make a decision that doesn't feel good for you. So I'm here to share information with you guys, to educate you, and then to, you know, really inspire you with how I live my life and share my opinions with you. But ultimately, I really do believe that the decision on whether you want to be vegan or should be vegan or anything like that really should be up to you completely. I also wanted to say that I am not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a healthcare professional in any sort of way. Although I do have my health coaching certification, like I mentioned in the intro. And it's always wise to see a doctor or a registered dietitian because to be honest, most doctors actually know nothing about nutrition, which is really sad before starting any new way of eating, especially if you're immune compromised, if you're pregnant, if you're breastfeeding or feeding small children, have a chronic illness, etc. Okay, so with those things being said, let's talk about the 10 mistakes that new vegans make. Okay, so the first mistake that new vegans make is not being sure about your why. That is why you're doing this. So don't do it because it's a trend. I really recommend digging deeper to find reasons for why being vegan really resonates with you and then stick with those reasons. Have them be a big part of your life. So are you doing this for your health? Are you doing it for the environment? Are you doing it for the animals? How about all three? Really connect with your why and keep it in mind because if you decide that you want to go vegan because you saw some people with a really large following on Instagram or YouTube who are vegan or going vegan and they look great and they say they feel great and you're like, I want to do that too. That sounds great. That is not going to be a reason that makes you stick with it in the long run. So really dig deep and find out why this is important to you. I really recommend doing some journaling. I have started journaling lately and I used to do it when I was younger, like in elementary school, just kind of like this was my day. But lately I've really gotten into journaling, just like talking about my feelings and really kind of using it as a way to really kind of get things out onto paper that are in my head. And it has been so helpful for me. Like I had no idea how beneficial it was to just kind of write, like free form writing, not really having like a structure or anything like that. So you could get out a piece of paper or your journal up at the top, why I want to be vegan. And you can kind of just like let things flow out of you, or you can do it on your computer if you'd prefer to type and really kind of solidify the reasons why this is so important to you and why you really, really do want to make the change in your life. Another thing that I think is really helpful, especially for new or aspiring vegans is to like, write your why on your mirror in your bedroom or in your bathroom. Take like a little dry erase marker and just write it down. You can put it on your fridge or at your desk at work or whatever. And that way throughout the day, you really get connected with that. And it really becomes something that's so important to you so that if you ever feel like you want to have that meat or that cheese or an egg or whatever it is for you, Maybe you can easily connect back to your why and decide this is actually more important to me than that taste of food for a couple of minutes or that brief satisfaction of eating that animal product. My why is actually a lot bigger than those reasons. 
and it will really, really, really help you stick with it in the long run. So I would recommend, like I said, not doing this because it's a trend or because your friends are doing it or you see people online doing it or because you want to lose weight or anything kind of kind of a little bit like shallow like that. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's the word that pops into my head. So for, but for really, really to try to find reasons that resonate really deeply with you and things that will get you to stick with this for life, because that's really the goal, doing this in a sustainable way for the rest of your life. So for me, most of you know by now that my why is the animals. And I, that is just so deep inside of me and that is just something that resonates with me and I will never not be vegan because of the animals. It means so much to me to do everything that I can to help these innocent sentient beings live happier lives and not be tortured and abused and killed in these factory farms or otherwise. It doesn't even have to be factory farms. Even if they're raised in a humane setting, they are being killed at the end of the day, which is not okay. I think murder is not okay to to any sentient being. So for me, that is my why. That's why I started this podcast. That's why I decided to go to IIN and get my health coaching certification so I could teach other people and help other people live this way. So that for me is just so big and so deep in me. And I just, it, it means so much to me that, that that's going to be the reason I do this forever. So find your why resonate with it every single day, stick with that why, and that will really, really, really help you stay vegan in the long run. The second mistake that new vegans make is not educating yourself and not doing enough research, especially if you're one of those people that wants to go vegan overnight. Say you, you know, watch one documentary and you're like, I'm doing this overnight. And then you try to change everything the next day. And you're like, I don't know what to eat. I don't know what to buy at the store. I don't know what to do when I go out to eat. I really think that doing your own research and educating yourself is so important. So important. That's why it's number two on my list. You really need to educate yourself on getting the nutrients you need, how to read food labels, finding vegan-friendly restaurants in your area, learning about non-vegan ingredients that are in a lot of foods. When you don't educate and do the research on these things, you might find that you get really frustrated and it might seem super overwhelming. And after a day or two or a week, you might be like, fuck this. (laughs) This is too much. Why do people do this? This is too hard. And a lot of the times it's because people are just not taking the time to educate themselves. So if you're listening to this podcast, then you're doing a great job so far. I have lots of episodes tailored to the things that I just mentioned, getting the nutrients you need, finding out about non-vegan ingredients, dining out as a vegan, stocking your vegan pantry. I have episodes all about that stuff. So go through the episodes of the How to Vegan podcast and start listening to the ones that you think you need to learn about first and just really educate yourself. I would just say, don't go into this just like thinking that you'll figure it out as you go, which a lot of it you will, but educating yourself is so important. So again, you don't just get really overwhelmed and just decide to like give up because I can see how that would happen. It, it Switching your life to living this way is a big deal. It's not just like, okay, I'm switching, done, that was easy. Changing your life from how you were living for so many years before this is hard and, can, and it can be difficult for a lot of people. So educate yourself do the research. It's so important. I promise it will help you so much in the long run so you don't just feel like peacing out on this whole thing. Number three, the third mistake that a lot of new vegans make is transitioning at a pace that doesn't work for you. So going vegan overnight might be way too overwhelming for you. For some people, that might be the way that works best is to just decide to do it go vegan overnight. But most people do best if they transition in little increments instead of going vegan overnight. So say you just have one vegan meal a day, or you're vegan only on the weekdays or on the weekends, or maybe you want to start with doing no meat for a while, then you cut out eggs, and then you cut out dairy. And this could even be over the course of several months, it could be over the course of a year, whatever feels best for you and whatever works for your lifestyle. You might not want to get rid of all the non-vegan items in your home right away, or maybe you do, maybe you have a budget for that to just like get rid of everything that you have that isn't vegan and go and buy everything 
new that is vegan. Most people don't have the budget to do that and want to use up their non-vegan items first and then replace them with vegan items after that or go grocery shopping and decide from there on out they're not going to buy any non-vegan items but if they had it previously they feel okay eating that. So again, you have to find what works for you. There is no right way. There is no wrong way. I highly recommend like creating a plan that works for you and sticking with it. So again, like I said, if you want to do vegan one meal a day, vegan on the weekdays, make a plan, create a meal plan, write a grocery list out, know how this is going to work for you and really stick with it. Really decide that this is going to be what you're going to do and stick with it. But don't worry about how quickly other people transition. Don't compare yourself to others because transitioning at a pace that works for you is going to be the sustainable thing to do. Like I said, the goal for this is to be sustainable. So transition at your own pace. Find what works for you and it will just help so much in the long run if you just decide to not worry about what others think and do what works best for you. I feel like I said that a million times, but it's so true. And I feel like I need to keep saying it because a lot of people in my How to Vegan Facebook group are like, ah, I just saw Earthlings or Dominion or Forks Over Knives or whatever documentary it is. And they're like, I need to do this right now. I can't, I can't keep eating animal products. And they feel like they need to do it overnight. And then they try and they give up because it's, again, too overwhelming. So if that's for you, if that's the kind of person you are, if you're like, I'm getting rid of all my stuff that isn't vegan, I'm going shopping tomorrow, this is a fresh start, doing it, then that's for you as well. But everybody's different. And understanding that and respecting yourself and what feels right in your mind for how this should work is the best way to do it. So again, you can like journal about it. If you're like feeling like, how should I do this? Feel free to get out your journal and start writing some stuff down on how you want to make this work and write out a plan and maybe one month, no meat. The next month, no meat and no eggs. And the next month, no meat, no eggs, no dairy. And the next month, maybe no meat, no eggs, no dairy, no honey. Whatever you want to do, do it at a pace that works for you. And then maybe after you get used to your vegan way of eating, you can start transitioning some of your non-food items into a more vegan friendly lifestyle. So maybe you stop buying leather, maybe you stop going to the zoo and circuses and all that stuff. But again, do it in a way that feels really good for you. The fourth mistake that a lot of new vegans make is thinking that you have to give up your favorite foods. Guess what? You do not, which is so exciting. Most, if not all, of your favorite foods can or have been by somebody else been veganized. So you can still eat things like tacos, spaghetti and meatballs, pizza, Caesar salads, buffalo chicken salads, chili, ice cream, cake, cookies, brownies. You can have it all, which is so exciting. I think so many people decide they want to go vegan and think that they are going to be eating salads and smoothies and that's about it. But that is not the case at all, at all, at all, at all. There's so many things that you can continue to eat. You just have to figure out ways to make it vegan. And like I said, a lot of people have already figured out how to make it vegan. So use Pinterest and you'll find a shit ton of vegan recipes. Just insert the word vegan in front of your favorite meal item and boom, so many options will pop up. There's just a little search bar. If you've never used Pinterest before, it's totally free and it's a great way to save and categorize your recipes. So I have lots of vegan boards that are like vegan breakfast, vegan lunch, vegan soup, vegan dinner, vegan dessert, all of these different boards. And then you pin recipes to them. If it, This might sound confusing if you don't know how Pinterest works. If you don't have Pinterest, I would definitely recommend getting it. I'll leave a link to my Pinterest boards in the show notes so you can totally go scope out what I have and save some of the stuff that I have to your boards and kind of get some ideas there. But yeah, even if you just want to use it as like a search engine, you don't even have to save anything at all. You can just go type in vegan, whatever you're looking for. So vegan. Yesterday, I wanted to make some like chocolate chip raisin oatmeal cookies. I don't know if that's the order. I should have said oatmeal raisin chocolate chip cookies. And so I just typed in vegan and then what I was looking for and it pops up with so many recipes and then you can kind of click on them and see maybe what you might have and what you don't have and kind of find a recipe that sounds good for you. So highly recommend Pinterest. YouTube is another really great 
search engine, essentially, to find recipes that other people have veganized. So if you haven't checked those resources out, definitely do that because if you think you have to give up your favorite foods, you really do not have to. There are so many vegan options. There are so many vegan alternatives now at the store. There's vegan cheese, vegan lunch meat, vegan sausages, like I said earlier, vegan meatballs, Ben and Jerry's ice cream is so delicious. There's, you know, vegan milks of all kinds and butter and pretty much everything that you need, you can find either at the store or you can make it at home. So don't think that you have to give up your favorite foods because you really don't. It might just be a little bit different from what you're used to. But again, if you have that why in mind, you're not really giving up a lot. You're gaining a lot more. So don't think you have to give up your favorite foods. There's so many of them out there and... Just talking about food is making me hungry right now. So mentioning a Caesar salad made me really want a Caesar salad. So I might make that tonight for dinner, but you don't have to give up your favorite foods. So don't think that you do. Number five, assuming that all vegan food is healthy. If you just listened to what I said in the last mistake that vegans make, it might be obvious to you by now that not all vegan food is healthy, but a lot of people will start living this lifestyle or start transitioning to veganism or decide they want to go vegan because they watched What the Health or they watched Forks Over Knives or The Game Changers and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to go vegan and I'm going to be so healthy no matter what I eat, no matter anything. I'm just going to be so healthy. But empty calories are empty calories. Oreos are vegan, you guys. French fries. Most French fries are vegan. Lots of chips are vegan. There's vegan ice cream. You can get a vegan Whopper at Burger King. You can get vegan burgers at Carl's Jr. That stuff isn't the healthiest. Yes, it's nice to have those options. So if you're on the go, you can stop at Burger King and get a vegan Whopper. Or if you're wanting to treat yourself every once in a while, that stuff is available because we're all human. And I know for me, there's no way that I could avoid eating that stuff because I love food. I'm such a foodie and that stuff is just comforting and delicious, but I really do try to eat it like 10% of the time, 90% healthy, 10% processed foods. Otherwise I try to eat like whole healthy plant-based foods, but that stuff is out there. And there are people that I know, there are vegans that I know that only eat processed foods like that. You know, they eat vegan sausage, vegan, like just egg in the morning or whatever it is. And then they just continually eat processed foods, chips, Oreos, candy. Most, there's a lot of candy that's vegan. I have an episode all about it. If you want to check it out, there's so much stuff that's vegan that isn't healthy for you. And there's a lot of people that turn to this lifestyle and eat only that stuff. And they're like, why am I not, you know, losing weight? I really wanted to lose weight. Or why am I not feeling really healthy and really good? I thought veganism was this cure-all to just make everything feel better in my body, but that's not true. Vegan food, can be like loaded with sugar. It can be loaded with saturated fat and chemicals that you can't even pronounce. So if you eat that way, you are probably going to gain weight. You might still feel bloated and feel awful after you're eating if you're only eating junk food. And many of the health benefits that you hear about on a vegan diet are achieved by eating a mostly whole foods plant-based diet. So really limiting the processed foods in your diet and focusing on eating lots of whole healthy foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, like beans and all of those things and whole grains like rice and quinoa and things like that. So like I said, I try to like 80 to 90% of the time eat whole plant-based foods, but that other 10 to 20% of the time, depending on where I am in my life and how my life is going or what time of year it is, I will indulge and let myself eat those processed vegan foods. Because like I said, I'm human. More power to you if you can eat 100% whole foods plant-based all the time or more so than I do because I wish I could, but sometimes I just don't have the self-control and I want to eat the foods because they're out there and they're so good and there's so many alternatives these days that I just can't stay away from at the store. So... But I just, I thought it was really important to note that not all vegan food is healthy. So be aware of that. If you're transitioning to this lifestyle or if you're a new vegan, be aware that there's a lot of unhealthy vegan food out there 
and that if you're wanting to lose weight, get healthier, that you really need to focus on whole foods, plant-based diet. Okay, so let's take a little break here and talk a little bit more Osea. I mentioned them in the intro. They're the sponsor for today's episode. And like I said, they are the original vegan, cruelty-free, results-driven skincare line. And they most certainly are results driven. They've been around since the mid nineties. They are a woman owned company, they're family run, and all of their products are just absolutely amazing. If you've never tried anything from them, I would highly recommend going to their website. I'll leave it in the show notes for you and checking out what they have because they have such a wide variety of products and they're all so amazing. If you're looking for some recommendations on products, I have their ocean cleanser. It's like a face wash. Absolutely love it so much. And I also have their blemish balm. If you are looking for a really good moisturizer for your face, this blemish balm, oh, it works so well. It smells so good. And it's kind of made for skin that is a little bit more blemish prone. So if that sounds like you, I would definitely try that out. But they have so many different products for all different skin types. Highly, highly recommend checking them out. If you're looking for something that is a little bit more sustainable, they package everything really sustainably. It doesn't come in plastic. It comes in little glass bottles and jars. And it's just so nice. I just love it so much. Everything I've tried from them is amazing. So if you're interested, you can get $10 off of your first purchase of $50 just by clicking the link in the show notes. So click on that link, go shopping, find the things you want, and that discount will be automatically applied at checkout. So click the link in the show notes and you will be all set to go and you'll be on your way to clear, beautiful, glowing skin. Okay, let's get back into some more mistakes that new vegans make. Number six is not eating enough calories. This is so important and I know a lot, if not all, new vegans make this mistake. So plant-based food can often be a lot higher in volume, but lower in calories compared to animal-based foods. So in other words, the calorie density for your meals might be lower than you're used to. Eating more fruits and vegetables and therefore more fiber and volume than you may be used to can really trick your brain into thinking you've eaten enough calories. So for example, say you take 500 calories of kale and compare that with 500 calories of chicken. 500 calories of kale is such a bigger volume than 500 calories of chicken. So if you were to put both into your stomach, after 500 calories of kale, you would feel super full. But after 500 calories of chicken, you wouldn't feel as full. So you're probably going to need to eat more, again, especially if you're focusing on eating more whole foods, plant-based foods. So if you're eating kind of unprocessed foods that are lower in calories, but higher in volume. Plus, your body is digesting everything so much more easily now that it's not having to work so hard to process the meat that you were eating. So your meals may just end up going through you so much faster than you're used to. So that's another reason that you might need to end up eating a little bit more than you think you do. Also, if you think about it, you're cutting out a whole food group or food groups from your plate that you're used to eating to. So you're going to have to compensate for those calories by adding in more plant-based foods. I know a lot of people are like, oh, okay, normally I have chicken and green beans and rice. So I'll just cut out the chicken and eat some rice and green beans. That's really not the best way to go about it. I would just recommend finding another kind of protein source. So maybe beans, maybe some vegan, you know, meat or whatever, and just loading up your plate with so many different colors and variety and stuff like that so that you're getting more calories, you're getting more nutrition, and you're filling your stomach up with things that are going to make you feel full, but also give you enough calories. So if you're wanting to lose weight, this can be a benefit because a lot of people that go vegan and and eat more on the healthy side of things end up easily losing weight, like without even trying, without exercising or doing anything different, they end up losing weight. And this is why, because the calorie density is so much different in plant foods and animal foods. But if you're wanting to maintain your weight, you're probably going to need to eat more food than you normally would have before, especially like I said, if it's unprocessed, healthy plant-based foods. But keep in mind that it can take some time for your stomach to kind of like stretch out and get used to 
having more volume in it. So at first you might be feeling so full, but feeling a little bit tired and maybe feeling a little bit like you're just not getting enough food or at the end of the day, you're really hungry or you're losing weight and you're not wanting to keep filling your stomach up, eat maybe more meals throughout the day. And eventually your stomach will get used to the higher density and volume of food that you're eating and your body will kind of like regulate itself in that way. But at first it can be kind of hard to eat enough food. So keep in mind that you might want to eat more calorically dense foods. So like nuts and seeds or peanut butter, avocado, um, coconut butter is another really good thing you can throw in like smoothies and stuff like that. Just making sure that you're, you know, beans, adding that stuff to your meal, making sure that you're eating not just, you know, smoothies, salad, and like a bowl of kale for dinner. You definitely need to be eating much more volume wise if you're eating really, really, really healthy than you might think. And another thing that can be really helpful as far as that stuff goes is to be open to trying new foods. A lot of people, like I said, will just cut out the meat, cut out the dairy, cut out the eggs or whatever they were eating before and just stick to whatever they would, whatever would be left on their plate, but be open to trying new foods. There are so many fruits and vegetables and legumes and nuts and seeds and whole grains out there that you've probably never tried before. So I would recommend branching out, trying new things. You never know what you might find that you love in this process of going vegan. So try new foods, and really focus on getting enough food, which might, like I said, be weird at first. You might feel like I'm so full, but I don't feel like I'm getting enough calories. Or maybe you're tracking your nutrition intake using an app like Chronometer, which I'll leave a link for in the show notes if you're interested in checking that out. And say you've been tracking everything you've been eating and to the end of the day, you look and you're like, oh my God, that is not enough calories for my body, especially maybe not for your activity level or whatever. So Keep in mind that this is something that a lot of new vegans do is they just don't eat enough food and then they wonder why they don't feel very good. So eat enough food, try new foods, be aware that this can take some time for your stomach to get used to, but just make sure you're eating enough calories. And like I said, tracking your nutrition intake and the food that you're eating with an app can be a really helpful way to make sure that you kind of are aware of what your calorie intake is at at the end of the day, as well as like if you're getting enough protein or carbs or fat or your macros and all of that stuff, you can kind of track with that too. So some people really like to do that, especially again, if you're working out a lot or if you're an athlete, you want to be making sure that you're getting a good balance of all of those. So feel free to check out the link in the show notes. Chronometer is what I use and just make sure that you're eating enough food. Bottom line, just make sure you're getting enough calories because this can be something that's really easy to not do. Okay, mistake number seven, worrying way too much about protein. So don't get me wrong, protein is important. It's the building blocks for your cells, for your body, But if you've been vegan for a hot minute or you're a new vegan and you've talked to anybody about it, number one question you're probably going to get is, but like for real, how do you get your protein? You have to have meat to get your protein. And that is just 100% not true. You really don't. That's a myth that has been created by the meat industry. Same with the calcium myth in the dairy industry. You do not need meat, animal flesh rotting dead animal corpse to get protein. You just don't. You can get it from the same place that the animals are getting it from the plants they're eating. Everything has protein in it. If it has structure to it, there's protein in it. Some things don't have a lot of protein. There's some foods that definitely have more protein than others, but most often, generally speaking, if you're getting enough calories and you're eating a wide variety of whole healthy plant-based foods, you're probably getting enough protein. Protein deficiency is almost unheard of in the United States. In fact, consuming too much protein might actually be at the root of many of our chronic illnesses, the main reasons for death in the United States. Things like heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, etc. This, a, a lot of these diseases could be caused by too much protein in your body. So it really kind of is the opposite. You need to be making sure you're getting enough protein and there's like protein calculators online to kind of plug in your activity level, your weight and all of that stuff and kind of judge how much protein you need because everybody is different for sure. But you probably don't need as much protein as you may think. And like I said, if you're eating enough variety, you shouldn't have a problem of getting enough of it or really any other nutrient for that matter. 
besides a couple of them, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. But if you're an athlete, if you're pregnant or you're breastfeeding or you're a little bit older in age, you need more protein than the average human. So again, I'd recommend going onto a website like PCRM. I'll leave a link for that in the show notes and kind of looking at, they, I think they have a chart on their website. They might even have like a calculator for it to see how much protein you need as an individual. Because like I said, everybody's different. So how much, you know, your spouse needs or your best friend needs might be different from how much you need. And if you are an athlete or pregnant or any of those other things, there are ways to get enough protein really easily. There's lots of protein powders out there that you can add into your smoothie in the morning. You can make sure you're eating more foods that are higher in protein. There's lots of lists out there of foods that are higher in protein. So if you just want to type in high protein plant-based foods, there's so many lists and, and recipes out there that can show you how to do this. But you definitely need to be conscious about protein, but don't stress about it way too much. Doing some research, like I mentioned earlier, is super important. So you don't want to just assume, I'll just do it. I don't need to worry about it at all at all. Having a well-planned out diet is important no matter what you're eating. Even if you're not eating vegan, I think knowing what you're consuming and making sure you're getting enough of everything is important. But just don't stress about it way too much. It's totally doable to get enough protein on a vegan diet. And again, if you want to use an app like Chronometer or you can just go to their website, track your nutrient intake, and at the end of the day, you can check your protein levels and see if you're getting enough, see if you're getting way too much, and kind of go from there and adjust your diet to make sure that your levels are where they should be for you. Okay, the eighth mistake that lots of new vegans make is not supplementing, not taking supplements. So you definitely need to be supplementing with vitamin B12 and vitamin D3, in my opinion. And this is after doing years of research. This is after being vegan for eight plus years, talking to other vegans, listening to vegan doctors and plant-based doctors talk about this. I definitely think that supplementing with vitamin B12 and vitamin D3 is really, really, really important. Unless, as far as the vitamin D side goes, unless you're getting plenty of sun or you're drinking fortified plant-based milks that are fortified with vitamin D3, same with B12. If you're getting a lot of fortified cereal, fortified milks, or eating a lot of nutritional yeast that's fortified with B12, you might be getting enough. But I think that supplementing with both of those just as a backup is super important because the damage that can be done when you're not getting enough of that is irreversible talking nerve damage and blood health and stuff like that with the B12 and vitamin D is a hormone that is so important for your body. So making sure that you're supplementing with those two things, I think is really important. I have an episode all about the supplements that I take. So if you're interested in learning more and kind of going in depth about why they're important and how much I recommend taking and the ones that I take and stuff like that, you can listen to that episode. So I won't go into too much detail here because I could talk about it forever. But some other things that vegans can be low in are things like omega-3s, iodine, iron, vitamin K2. So Those are some other things that you might want to be aware of getting enough in your diet. And as of right now, I take a few other supplements more than just the B12 and vitamin D, mostly as a backup and because I'm pregnant and I want to be making sure that I am giving my little baby everything that they need and that I'm getting everything that I need while I'm on this pregnancy journey. But another thing that I really recommend is getting a blood test done, which is often covered by your insurance. So you can call and ask to see And that way you'll know exactly what you might be low and possibly high in. And that's really ideal just to kind of be aware, just to kind of know, and then you can adjust your diet from there. So if you're listening to this and you're not vegan yet, I would recommend getting a blood test done now. And then after you go vegan, getting another blood test done like six months into it. And you can kind of compare and see where the differences lie and what you might need to adjust. But bottom line, I think that Everybody should be taking a vitamin B12 and vitamin D3, even people who aren't vegan or vegetarian. Most people are low in both of those things, so I recommend that to everybody. And not supplementing can be a really dangerous thing that I think a lot of people go vegan and they're like, oh, I have everything I need or the vegan diet should give everything to me that I, that I need. I don't need to worry about it. But that typically isn't the case and I don't want to be promoting something and then have you get sick down the line. So... I recommend B12, vitamin D3 to everybody. As of right now, I am taking a supplement called Holier and I absolutely love it. It's made for vegans 
and it has the essential vitamins and minerals that vegans need. So in the holier capsules, there is omega-3, vitamin B12, iron, vitamin D3, zinc, iodine, vitamin K2, and magnesium. So I'm just taking this as a backup just to make sure that I'm getting everything I need. A lot of this I think I get from my food. I haven't tracked my nutrient intake in a while. This episode's making me want to get onto Chronometer app and track my nutrients for like a day or a week or so just to kind of see where I'm at. But especially because I'm pregnant, I want to be making sure for sure that I'm getting everything I need. So I've been taking this holier supplement and I absolutely love it. The capsules taste like lemon, so they don't taste bad like a lot of other vitamins and supplements out there that just taste so shitty. These like taste really good and they're just an amazing company. So if you're interested in trying Holier out, I have a little discount code for you. So I'll leave the link in the show notes for you and the discount code is just my name. It's just Kristen. So I think if you click on the link in the show notes, it'll just apply the discount for you. But if not, just use the code Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N, and you will get 25% off of your first purchase, which is a really good deal. So you can sign up to get these like monthly. I think they just send them to you every month and that way you don't have to worry about it or you can just do like a one-time purchase. But I'm really loving these. And then for those of you wondering, I am taking like a methylfolate, the active form of folic acid because that's really important when you're pregnant too. So I'm taking that along with Holier right now. But again, I have a, an episode all about supplements. So if you want to hear more about the supplements that I was taking in summer, sometimes it changes and that's totally normal depending on how you're feeling and what you're eating and all that stuff. But as of now, those are what I'm taking. Go listen to the episode about supplements if you want to hear more, but not supplementing at all, I think is a really big mistake that new vegans make. Mistake number nine, being way too hard on yourself. I think that most vegans do this. I think that a lot of people decide they want to transition to this vegan way of living and then they just get so discouraged after a few setbacks. They're just like, oh, I ate something that had milk in it or I bought this product and I love it. And then I realized that there's eggs in it. Like, oh, this is so awful. Like, I can't do this. This is too hard. But guess what? There is no perfect vegan. We live in a very, very non-vegan world, you guys, like such a non-vegan world and slip-ups happen. Like that is a thing that happens, whether they're intentional or not intentional. So don't be too hard on yourself. Just don't be too hard on yourself because there's no perfect vegan. For example, all FDA approved medication has been tested on animals. So if you're taking any kind of prescription medication, it's technically not vegan. So for example, I have epilepsy and I have to take medication twice a day so that I don't have a seizure. And guess what? It's been tested on animals. But if I didn't take it, I might fall down the stairs or I might be driving my car and have a seizure and crash into someone and really hurt them or myself. So That's part of the definition of vegan, where it says as far as possible and practical that that that's where that comes into play because there there's no possible way to be a perfect vegan. And that's one example about, you know, the medication. The second example is most car and bike tire manufacturers use animal based steric acid to make their tires, which helps the rubber in these tires hold shape under steady surface friction. So if you have a car or if you have a bike, it's probably not fully vegan. The glue that's used in instruments and woodwork is often sourced from animals. So there's lots of things out there that make this world really hard to be completely vegan in. And that's okay. That's not the goal. It's not about perfection. It's about doing the best that you can to create a better world for yourself and for others. So don't be too hard on yourself. It's just not worth it. It doesn't help anything. Being negative is just not a good space to be in at all. It's just not. And accidentally eating something that isn't vegan or giving into temptations once or twice or even a few times after going vegan doesn't mean that you failed for good and that it's that it's over. Your vegan days are over. You're not vegan anymore, so you might as well just give up. Guess what? You are still vegan even if you accidentally slip up. If that's what you want to call yourself, if you're like, I'm vegan and maybe you slip up here and there, it doesn't just erase everything. It doesn't mean you're not vegan. That is very common. Lots of people do that. So don't just think that it's all done, that you're giving up, that you're going back to your meat eating ways. Because again, that's not the point. The point of this is to do this very sustainably and to make this work in the long run. So just know that this is 
a very common thing that vegans slip up. They eat things that aren't vegan. They wear things that aren't vegan. And sometimes other vegans call them out and they're like, hey, that's not vegan. Hopefully they're doing it in a nice way. A lot of times they're not, which is really shitty. The vegan police is a whole nother conversation. Not the biggest fan, but sometimes that happens. You know, you share a picture in a group and you're like, look at this breakfast I made with these breakfast sausages. And someone's like, those aren't vegan. You're like, oh, okay. Just learn from your mistakes, brush yourself off and try to do better next time. That's kind of my biggest advice is just learn from your mistakes. Just move on. Stay in the present moment. The past is not here anymore. The past is the past. So focus on the present moment. Learn from what you did, from what you, you know, how you felt when you ate that non-vegan food or anything like that. Learn from your mistakes and just please don't be too hard on yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't think you have to be, like I said, a perfect vegan because that really doesn't exist. That's not the goal. Just doing the best that you can for yourself and for the world around you is the goal. So being hard on yourself doesn't really help at all. So please don't be too hard on yourself. Okay, and number 10, the 10th mistake that new vegans make is not finding help and support. So when you first go vegan, your friends and family, surprise, might not be super supportive right away, especially in the very beginning. They might be like, what in the shit are you doing? Like, what is this? This makes no sense. Why aren't you eating meat? Why aren't you eating eggs? Like, that stuff's good for you. You know, they might not have their eyes opened up yet at all. And they might think that you're just a crazy person. Honestly, that's how you get looked at by a lot of people, especially your friends and family. They look at you like, you, what are you doing? So you might not find a lot of support from them in the very beginning. Over time, that can change for sure as they kind of learn why you're doing it and educate themselves and taste the delicious vegan food that you make. So you might need to find support elsewhere. If if you have friends and family that are supportive, then fuck yeah, that is so amazing. That is so helpful. Oh, a lot of people don't have that. So if you do, you are lucky and take that in and be grateful for it every single day. But for those of you who are just going vegan or have been vegan for a minute and you just don't have that support and help that you need because everybody needs help, everybody needs support. There's lots of ways that you can reach out and find that. One of my favorite ways is Facebook groups. So if you're on Facebook, then this is really easy and accessible for you. If you're not, I would recommend getting Facebook just for Facebook groups because my Facebook group in particular, it's called How to Vegan. There are over 88,000 members in it and everyone is so kind and loving and supportive and non-judgmental and inspirational. That's like the number one rule of my group is if you're not going to be that way, you can't be in my group. There's no images of animal cruelty allowed, so it's a really safe space for people to just ask questions and share the food that they're eating and talk about news that's happening in the vegan world. So if you're not a part of my group yet, please join. It's called How to Vegan, same as this podcast. And let me know if you join. Leave a post that says, hey, I'm coming over from your podcast. So glad I'm here. And I would love to know that that you've joined the group from listening to the podcast. There's other vegan groups on Facebook too. So it doesn't just have to be my group, but it's such a good place. Like so many new vegans join and they ask any question that they want and there's no silly question. And you have, like I said, over 88,000 people in the group to help answer your question from all different points of view. And it's just such a supportive place to be. So Facebook groups are really helpful. A lot of people comment in the group saying like, I couldn't have done this without this group. This has been a pivotal part of me becoming vegan and staying vegan. So Facebook groups, awesome. Same with meetup groups. You can try to find a meetup group in your area. Meetup.com is where you would go and then you can type in your area and there might be a vegan or plant-based meetup group. So that can be a great way to meet other like-minded people. Lots of times they do like potlucks where everybody brings a dish and then everything is 100% vegan and you get to try all of these different things. You get to hang out with vegans and Oh, it's so fun. Meetup groups are awesome. A lot of times they'll meet at like a vegan friendly restaurant and everybody can see what everybody else orders and just chat and hang out. So meetup groups in your area. If there isn't one, if you go check and there isn't one, you can start one. That's also something that is really exciting. And then you're the founder of a meetup group in your area. Instagram is another good place to meet local like-minded vegans. You can search for the hashtag 
I live in Boise, Idaho. So like I would search hashtag Boise vegan and then see other people that are posting stuff about that or find vegan friendly restaurants and see people that follow them, like them, like their posts, comment on their images and stuff like that. And then connect with them. You can say, hey, I'm newly vegan. Do you have any suggestions? Or I'd love to connect. There's usually vegans are really nice and are stoked to meet and help other vegans. So Instagram can be a really good place to connect with new vegans. Same with things like veg fests or vegan fests or vegetarian festivals. Really good thing to find in your area and maybe travel to if it's kind of near. I have never been to a vegan festival, but I want to go to one so bad. There's one in Portland that I want to go to so bad. I mean, I'm, I really need to try to go. And the, everything's vegan. So there's all these vendors with vegan food and drinks and there's tons of vegans walking around and you never know who you might run into or bump into or connect with. So try to find like a veg fest in your area. That can be another really great way to meet other people that can help and support you along your journey. And then the last thing that I have on my list is vegan restaurants. This may, may not be like the number one thing that people want to do is go to like a vegan friendly restaurant and sit there and try to like strike up conversation with other people. But if there's a bar and you're there alone and someone else is be like, Hey, what'd you get? You know, what are you eating? Oh, that looks good. I'm newly vegan. Like, do you have any recommendations on the menu? And you never know. Or the people that work there, you might find help and support through them. And there's so many ways. So feel free to ask for help. If you need it, reach out, find support. It's so important to feel like you're supported along this journey or else again you might just be like I'm giving up this is too hard I no one knows what I'm talking about everybody in my life thinks I'm crazy I just need some help and support so there are ways to find it if you ever need anything and you're feeling really lost please feel free to reach out to me you can find me on Instagram at kristen.pound and I would love to help help you with anything that you need help with first of all I would recommend joining my how to vegan Facebook group because you're going to get help from like thousands of people. But if you're just feeling like you need some one-on-one help, feel free to reach out to me. I like responding with little like voice messages when I get a chance. So I'm here for you. If you need help, don't feel like you're alone. I am here for you. It might take me a hot minute to get to your message because I get a lot of them, but I'm here for you. I totally want to be someone that you can turn to if you need some help and support. So not finding help and support is a mistake. I definitely think so. And a lot of new vegans think they can just do it on their own and that they'll be good to go. And I just don't think that is ideal. Okay. And because it's me and I love giving bonus tips and because I couldn't just narrow it down to 10, um, I have a bonus tip or bonus mistake for you. And the mistake is giving up too quickly or too easily. So you might not feel absolutely amazing right away. And that's totally normal. Your body might just be going through a little like detox withdrawal period It can take some time for your body to get used to eating this way, especially after you've eaten not this way your whole life. Your body might just be saying like, wait, what is this? What is going on? I'm not used to this. It's flushing out all of those icky toxins and animal products that you've been eating for your whole life. And you might just not feel that good. A lot of people who go vegan at first say they feel tired. They have headaches. They just don't feel great. And that is totally normal. Sometimes It can last for up to 30 days, average is about a week or two, and some people don't feel that way at all. Like I personally didn't have any negative side effects after going vegan. I kind of just felt really good right away, but a lot of people don't. So be aware that this is a thing. It can take some time for your body to get used to this. Don't expect like a 180 overnight. Don't wake up and expect to be like, oh my God, my skin is glowing. I feel amazing. I've lost weight because that's not how really any diet or any way of lifestyle change works. Don't forget to connect to the ethical side of things as well as the health side of things. So if you're like, oh, I'm only doing this because I want my skin to clear up or I want to lose weight. Well, those are things that could possibly happen. I think that not connecting to the ethical side of things is going to be another reason that you give up too quickly or easily. So for example, there's pretty much no way I would be 100% vegan solely for my health because I just love junk food and stuff like that every once in a while. And for me, my health is something that's important, but it's not a big enough reason for me to just completely overhaul everything and cut out an entire, like, I was going to say food group, but dead animals and their secretions is not a food group, but you know what I mean. So, but I can see why some people would totally go back to a non-vegan way of living if they were only doing it for their health. If you have like, you know, a chronic illness or you really need to lose weight or there's something like that that is really driving you, I could see maybe sticking with it for your health. But I can see why a lot of people are doing, going vegan for their, these health reasons. And then after they 
do it for a while, they're like, well, I don't want to do this anymore. So I really think it's important to connect to the ethical side of things. Watch documentaries like Earthlings, watch documentaries like Dominion and Cowspiracy so you know what's happening to these animals on these factory farms, so you know what's happening to the planet, the environment, as a result of humans consuming animal products, so that you really have this kind of ingrained in you and this ethical side of all of it is another huge part of why you're wanting to do this because I think without that it can be really easy to give up because a lot of people aren't going to stick with something just for their health. Some people do but a lot of people won't. So remember that veganism is not just a diet, it's a lifestyle so focusing on this will help you stick with it in the long run. Again, bring it all back to number one, number one mistake. Just deeply connect with your why whatever it is. And just don't give up too easily or too quickly. This can take time to get used to. You have help. You have support. Just stick with it. It is going to feel so good in the long run for so many different reasons. Okay, so that's it. That's my 10 slash 11 mistakes that new vegans make. I really hope you liked this episode. I hope that you found it inspirational, educational. I hope that if you're a new vegan, you don't feel so alone and so confused and you don't feel like, ah, I'm doing all these things wrong. What do I do? Because a lot of new vegans make these mistakes, but there's ways to avoid them. There's ways to get around them. So I really hope that you found this episode helpful for sure. This one was a really fun one for me to put together. Um, A lot of it was kind of similar, I realized, um, as the last episode that I did, which was a vegan, a beginner's guide to going vegan. So a lot of it was similar because it's kind of under the same umbrella. Um, the same topic idea, but I really think that it's important to have an episode like this to be like, hey, these are mistakes that people make. You're not alone. Here's what to do to help. So please make sure that you are subscribed on your favorite podcast listening platform. Turn on your auto downloads for this podcast so you'll be able to listen to the new episodes no matter where you are. And if you're loving the podcast, like I said earlier, please head on over to the Apple Podcasts app, leave a rating, leave a review. It helps the podcast out so, so much so much. I really appreciate those of you who leave a review. Plus, I just love hearing your feedback on the podcast. So please go do that if you haven't yet. And don't forget to share this episode with anyone who might be interested in this info that I put together for you today. Go ahead, share that vegan love. It feels good. Like I always say, that ripple effect is real. I'm not lying. It is real. It is so real. For the full show notes, including links to everything that I mentioned, head on over to my website, kristenpound.com, click on the podcast tab, or you can just head straight there by typing in kristenpound.com forward slash podcast. If you have any ideas for an episode, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. I have a massive ass list of podcast episodes that I want to do, but I still would love to add your idea to it. And who knows, it might be one that I've never thought of and I want to do it soon. So if you have any ideas for an episode, let me know. Feel free to send me a DM with any questions you might have. Like I said, I love sending little voice message responses because it's quicker for me and it's more personal. So hit me up if you have any questions or if you have any comments or anything that you'd like to share with me. Thanks again to Osea Malibu for sponsoring today's episode. Click on the link in the show notes to get $10 off of your first purchase of $50. So thanks again for listening. I truly hope you enjoyed the episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will just catch you guys in the next episode of the How to Vegan podcast. Peace. Peace.